Welcome to our Sunday greetings today on Sunday the 28th of June 2020. We have a virtual pulpit swap. Reverend Tim Sumter of the congregations All Saints and St. Stephen's and Oakbrook and Borowash will share a reflection with us and I have the privilege of sharing a reflection with his congregations. So welcome Tim. Well, hello, and I'd like to thank um, Joachim for inviting me to lead this talk today. And I pray that wherever we are, we would sense and know God's presence. And now let's pray. Loving Lord God, we thank you for this day and we thank you for your word. And we thank you too for the many ways you speak to us. May we hear your voice now from your word and by your spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. I've noticed how hairstyles have changed since the lockdown. don't know whether you have. Um, some people have just allowed their hair to grow. It's called the lockdown look. Um, others have had a go at cutting their own hair. Some obviously have got more of a gift for that than others. Um, and then some hairdressers have remained open but have had their very own um, social distancing protocols as you can see by the photographs. One of our national news readers said recently the luckiest people in lockdown are those who live with a hairdresser. One or two of you have contacted me to ask how I'm getting my hair cut. This is the second trim I've had now in lockdown. And the answer is really simple, Zoe cuts my hair and she's been doing that for 20 years, which is lovely. It does occasionally though, I confess, have its drawbacks. A few years ago, um, Zoe was cutting my hair one Saturday evening in the vicarage and we had a spat. Neither of us can remember um, what that was about, but I remember this, um, that Zoe decided to down tools um, which meant she refused to finish my haircut. Now I looked like one of those um, pop stars from the 1980s. I had a bushy side hair on one side of my head and hardly any on the other. Um, I was a little concerned because I was preaching the next day and I wonder what people would think. Fortunately Zoe and I patched things up and I got to church um, with a, a decent haircut and I was very grateful um, for that. Now here's a question for you. Where is hair mentioned in the Bible? I'd love to have a, a chat with you about that. It's fascinating the amount of times it's there. Here's just three times the Bible mentions hair that I was thinking about. The first, of course, is Samson in the Old Testament, the Jewish scriptures. His hair wasn't cut and that became a symbol of consecration to God. Indeed, um, the hair symbolised the power of God on Samson at a time when the nation was spiritually weak. Sadly, he had God's power, but he didn't have purity in his character. His gifting led him to places his character couldn't keep him. It seems from talking to people that God has been challenging some of us about our habits in lockdown. I'm talking really about bad habits, spiritual bad habits, things that inhibit our spiritual growth. We all know what they are because we each have different ones. They are things that we are challenged to leave behind when lockdown finishes. God's vision for the church is this, that we're a people, even in our weakness, that reflect God's power. But we should have purity of character with the power. What a vision for a post-lockdown church, the power of God and the purity of Christian characters. Well, the second thing I thought about when I thought about uh, hair in the scripture was John chapter 12 and Jesus's friend Mary. Mary meets Jesus, she breaks open a small bottle of expensive perfume and she does this, she pours it all over his feet. 
The whole house is filled with the heady fragrance from that bottle. And then she does something quite astonishing in that culture. She unfurls her hair in public. It's probably never been cut and she uses it as a towel to wipe Jesus's feet. Bizarre, you might think. Well, you might be right, but I think there's something else going on here. I think Mary's was a profound and poignant and personal act of worship. She was worshipping Jesus and preparing him for his burial. Since lockdown, we haven't been able to meet in church and we've all been discovering different, unique, personal ways of worshipping God. I've been really enjoying doing that in silence and having a few CDs on occasionally too. But as we've done that, some of us have been challenged by God about the things we may be worshipping in our lives that we shouldn't be. Things that maybe they've taken God's place at the centre of our lives or even on the edges for some of us. There's a challenge there to leave those things in lockdown when we move on. God wants us to have a passionate focus in our worship on Jesus, on who he is and who he's, what he's done for us. As we do that, so God is blessed and the fragrance of our worship draws other people in to God's love too. Well, finally for me, there are those words of Jesus in Matthew chapter 10. Jesus is talking to people who are afraid and he's reminding them that God loves them. And he says these words in Matthew chapter 10, verse 30. And the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Of course, it doesn't matter whether we've got much hair on our head or not. It's the symbolism that counts. And what Jesus is saying here in a profound way is that God knows each of us intimately. Now, I, I've been married to Zoe for 32 years. I've never counted the hairs on her head. Well, firstly, because I just don't have the time. And secondly, if I did that, she might think I've lost the plot. But when Jesus says that God knows each of the hairs on our head, I believe he means it. He means this, that God knows you intimately today. God knows the pains, the anxieties, the struggles that you have, and he loves you. God knows too your joys and the things that um, give you um, a passion for life, and God loves you. The Bible says you are the apple of God's eye. God cares for you. God is compassionate about you. God wants the very best for you. God hasn't forgotten you. You're not on a shelf somewhere gathering dust. God has a plan and a purpose for your precious life. That's what those words are saying. And of course, the definitive example of the love God has for you is the cross on which Jesus died. There God and man inextricably joined together in Jesus died that we might be forgiven and set free. The cross is like a bridge through forgiveness. We can cross the cross into a deep relationship with God. Well, I'd like to finish this talk today with a prayer. It's a prayer of dedication to God. I'd like you to pray the words with me. For some of you, you'll be praying this prayer for the very first time, connecting with God for the first time through what Jesus has done for you. That's wonderful. For others of us today, we've prayed this prayer before, perhaps like me, many times. So use it as a prayer of rededication. I'm going to pray the prayer each line at a time and then invite you to pray uh, after me too. So here's the prayer. Loving God, thank you that you know me and you love me. Forgive me when, like Samson, my life falls short of your best. Help me to worship you like Mary. Help me dismantle things in my life which I've worshipped instead of you. 
thank you that the very hairs on my head are all numbered. I open my life to your love in Jesus. Help me to love you and all that you love. Amen. And please, wherever you are today, remember this. Jesus says to you, the very hairs on your head are all numbered. So be not afraid. Until we meet again, may God bless you real good. Amen. So we thank Tim Samter for this thought-provoking reflection. I would like to take this opportunity and say a few words about Unity Prayer Watch. What is it? It's like a prayer chain that goes around the year and around the world. Someone is praying for half an hour or an hour or whatever period of time and then someone else takes over and someone else takes over and so it goes around the world and around the year. And as Ockbrook and Leicester congregations, we have been allocated with the slots from Thursday 2nd of July 1 p.m. till Friday the 3rd of July 5 a.m. And if you would like to be part of this prayer chain, please do let us know which time slot you would like to cover. And we also have information, prayer information, which might help you to pray. You can do this in your home, of course. So I would blessing to you. Have a good Sunday, a good week, and God be with you.